okay guys let's talk a little bit about uh, what is called as the emp pathway emp pathway now what is emp pathway you may wonder this is nothing but a type of glycolysis simple as that it is a type of glycolysis pathway that's it right there are different variations of glycolysis pathway like entner dowdorf pathway and other things but uh, the most common form or the most common type of glycolysis pathway is called as the emp pathway based on uh, the discoverer of this pathway m den meyer of parnes m den meyer of parnes pathway now uh, i have separate videos on glycolysis and actually more than one video about glycolysis in my youtube channel so you can go there and look at the detailed stages of glycolysis but in this video I am, as i am talking about emp pathway which is nothing but glycolysis i am just going to sum up the glycolysis pathway in very brief manner now usually glycolysis pathway is at the core of uh, the carbohydrate metabolism inside the cell because uh, it it leads us a journey from glucose which is the sugar from the glucose to pyruvate and pyruvate is very very important molecule inside because once we produce pyruvate we can go to tca cycle we can go to fermentation right and we can go and we can produce many more anabolic pathways using that uh, that pyruvate so pyruvate is a very important intermediate and to produce pyruvate the only way from glucose to produce pyruvate and from the simple sugar to produce pyruvate is to pass it through glycolysis or emp pathway now this pathway is not important for producing energy because the dedication of this pathway is to focus on producing pyruvate from from glucose that means usually after this pathway they produces two pyruvates actually from one glucose molecule right but they produce very little energy here total gain of 2 atps are produced at the end of the whole process right actually they consume 2 atp produces 4 atps so ultimately the total gain of atp is 2 right so let's talk about in very briefly what about this emp pathway so it starts with this glucose we all know it starts with glucose right so that glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate how we need to add a phosphate right so we, we add a phosphate from outside and the, who can be better than atp as a phosphate donor atp is always there to do its job atp donates the phosphate to glucose added to the six so glucose 6 phosphate is produced now from this glucose 6 phosphate simple rearrangement occurs and then they produce what is called sorry that let's take this one yeah they produce fructose 6 phosphate simple rearrangement they produce 6 fructose 6 phosphate which is also 6 carbon molecule nothing important about this stage from this fructose 6 phosphate they produce fructose 1 6 bisphosphate fructose 1 6 bisphosphate now this fructose 1 6 bisphosphate means two different phosphates are attached one at the 6 carbon one at the 1 carbon the first carbon in the earlier stage uh phosphate group is already there in the 6th carbon in the fructose so one new phosphate must have been added again atp donates that phosphate and add it to the first carbon of the fructose converting it to fructose 1,6 bisphosphate or diphosphate whatever so once we produce fructose 1,6 bisphosphate then it is converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate g3p and this is the stage when you know fructose 6 phosphate is 6 carbon and they produces two glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate each of them 3 carbon two, two or three carbon molecules ultimately 6 carbon you know the calculation of carbons one while you are doing all this biochemical pathway is very very important to keep track on what's going on right so always keep track on the carbon number it helps you to understand the pathway so that's 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 what is produced once the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is produced then the latter stages are called the payback phases where they produces energy and all these things because you know up until the production of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate 
they require ATP instead of producing anything. Now after the production of G3P, they will start producing other things, right. So from this G3P, so we have G3P, we've got G3P, great news. After that, they convert this G3P into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, bisphosphoglycerate or 1,3-BPG. These are the short forms and they are pretty commonly known as this. So 1,3-BPG is produced and this process required the presence of NAD and they require 2 NAD because you know we are talking about twice, all this process twice. Actually in one particular process of conversion from G3P to 1,3-BPG, they requires only 1 NAD. But uh, from this point of view, everything we'll be talking about will be twice. So everything will be twice there, right? So don't forget about this concept. Don't think about that for one conversion we require 2 NAD. It never happens like that. So when they produce a 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate or BPG, from this point, this 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is, uh, you know, very energetic molecule. Now, any molecule, any intermediate with phosphate groups added are energetic. For example, ATP, it has phosphate, it is energetic. 1,3-BPG, two phosphates, energetic. Phosphoenol pyruvate, energetic. Those molecules are energetic. So once we have energetic molecule, they need to release that energy and for releasing that energy, let us take the different color, what they do actually, they convert it into 3 phosphoglycerate, again 2 copies. And during this process, 1 phosphate is released, as you can see, previously 1, 3 is phosphoglycerate, biphosphoglycerate and now only 3 phosphoglycerate. So definitely 1 phosphate is released and it is released, it is provided to ADP to convert it into ATP. This is the production of an ATP, right? So ATP plus 1 here. Now after this stage, this 3-phosphoglycerate will have a simple rearrangement of the phosphate group. The group transferred from, you know, again uh, two ATPs actually. So because, you know, everything is twice here. So from this 3-phosphoglycerate, they just transferred the phosphate group from third carbon to the second carbon and as a result what it will do, it will change it to 2-phosphoglycerate, right, or 2-phosphoglyceric acid, same thing, phosphoglycerate, phosphoglyceric acid, same things. So from this 2-phosphoglyceric acid, they will produce 2-phosphoenol pyruvate or PEP. Once they produce phosphoenol pyruvate, this is another very much energetic molecule, right? So I must say this is also energetic, this is also energetic. So final stage is conversion of PEP into pyruvate and this stage is, you know, this stage, some of the stages during this process is reversible, but this stage is definitely not reversible because they will produce here pyruvate and again they have huge amount of energy stored there, so they just transfer this phosphate to ADP to convert it into ATP. So again twice, so ultimately we get plus 2. So ultimately we have 4 ATP produced and previously we consume 1 ATP here and 1 ATP here. So if we calculate completely what we will get? 2 plus 2, 4 minus 2 ultimate gain of 2 ATP. This is the gain. This is the gain of 2 ATPs as I have told you before. So this in a simple way is the EMP pathway guys.